and letting him know, like, I know God that you haven't answered my request just yet, but I know you hear me and I know that it's for a good reason. Hi, this is Christina Eve and welcome to Shine Strong, Live Long. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer or a listener to the podcast or if you hear me on the radio. Today, it is time for intentionality, where we are intentional about making time to actively invest into becoming the people that God designed for us to be. So take a second, grab your tea or whatever it is you want to drink and join me for today's topic. So while you're grabbing your tea, um, or maybe you already had it, I'm gonna show you what I'm drinking. So I probably should have clipped this on, but I have a cardamom tea. Let me clip this real quick. Okay, cool. I like holding it though. Maybe it's the churchy part of me. All right, so <laughs> I'm drinking my cardamom tea. You might remember from a few episodes back for intentionality. Um, I was just so excited about this tea. You guys, this is my last tea bag. That's how long I've just been sitting on this tea. So you know today is a special occasion. And this tea is very, very hot. Okay, well, while that cools down and steeps a little longer, today's topic is something that I feel like every Christian has like gone through. And that's like a period in their life where they felt desperate for God to answer them, desperate for, for things to change in their situation. Um, and just know that like feeling desperate um, is okay. Like feeling desperate, feeling like you really need God, that's normal. Like we all do need God. Um, but there are gonna be seasons in our life where it's just a little harder, where we're like, God, do you hear me? But I just wanna encourage you today that God does hear you. The word says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he is always here. He's always present. Um, the only thing that separates us from God is sin, right? So if we repent and uh, we get things right, then, then God hears us, right? It's just that waiting period, that period of like, when is this gonna happen? Like, God, are you still like listening to me? That's a little hard, but I just wanna let you know that in those times, be faithful. And we're so blessed now that we have the Holy Spirit. We're so blessed because of Jesus, praise the Lord, um, that we don't have to have those periods of desperation like this guy that we're talking about today. His name is Saul. So if you haven't read about Saul, we've been kind of studying Saul a little bit in our small group. And there was a part of Saul's story that stood out to me. Like we all know, or we might not know, um, but Saul was the king. He was the first king of Israel. And he was the king right before uh, God anointed or Samuel anointed David to be king. Um, and then Saul just had a really hard time. Like he really just hated David. He wanted to kill him. Like he was just really struggling because the spirit of the Lord left him, right? And was with David. Thus, David being that mighty warrior, David being able to slay Goliath, David killing um, 10,000 while Saul only did 1,000. You guys, that is what was happening back in this Old Testament story. And there was a time where Saul was just so desperate to hear from God. And he just was so in denial about what God told him. So I'm just gonna go to read a few scriptures. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 28. And I'm just gonna start with, I think verse five. Yeah, let's just start with verse five. But the whole chapter is really good to read. Um, verse five says, and when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, which were like the enemies, the army that was trying to come against Israel, um, he was still king at the time, all right? So when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. Verse six says, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, 
the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams or by Urim, which was this weird, well, not weird, but this practice that they did where it was kind of like, um, let me know if you know more than me, but like in my research, it was like a, a way to kind of judge people uh, based on like these actual objects that they had but the priest was the one that was able to do that. But anyways, but nor by Urim, nor by prophets, okay? So during this time, Saul as king, he was just going through it, you guys, like I was saying, and he just went and he sent all the people away that were um, people who were prophets of God, people who had familiar spirits, as it says in, in the scripture, and people who were like wizards, like all the oracle, uh, magical, people who was in that witchcraft stuff, everybody, and the good and the bad, he sent them away. He was just distressed. But now he's like, oh man, the enemy is coming and God is not talking to me, right? What do I do? So to paraphrase or to summarize the rest of the book, basically Saul goes out of his way. Uh, he seeks out one of the people he like sent away um, from the area. Um, and she was somebody who uh, did things with the spirits. I don't know if her if she was an oracle or not, but it was kind of like like that. So this is it gets kind of weird. Old Testament is interesting. However, this King James version tells us that Saul basically was so desperate to hear from God that he sought out this lady who could contact uh, uh, Samuel, the old prophet in the spirit realm, right? Samuel's dead. So he's looking for someone who can talk to the dead, right? Um, to ask Samuel, like, for God's help in this, right? <laughs> to seek God's, like, favor and blessing. So um, needless to say, without getting all into the story, I do encourage you to read it. Um, basically, he goes there in disguise. He, he asks the lady to contact Samuel. The lady does get in contact with Samuel and Samuel's like in verse um, 16, Samuel's like, I like, I know you're afraid, but like, wherefore, why do you ask me? I'm going to paraphrase this. So like basically seeing that the Lord departed from you and you are the God's enemy, why are you seeking me? Meaning because I am a prophet of God, right? So what I can tell you is only what God is going to tell me to tell you. And if you're an enemy of God, then you're like on your own. That sucks, right? That sucks, but that is the reality of where we were as humans before Jesus, right? And so because we have the Holy Spirit, when we do feel those moments of desperation, just know that through Jesus Christ, that Holy Spirit is there. He's always listening. And I just want to encourage you that when, well, for me, when I feel moments of desperation, okay? Uh, when I feel like God is not listening or he doesn't hear me, you know, even though I know the truth is that he does and that he's here with me always. And I wouldn't have been able to wake up this morning without the Lord, you know? We all still sometimes feel that way, right? And I just want to let you know that in those moments, glorify God, right? praise him the closest thing that we can um the closest connection that we can have with god and with just what it will be like in heaven right after after this life is entering into god's presence just with thanksgiving and praise and letting him know like i know god that you haven't answered my request just yet but i know you hear me and i know that it's for a good reason and if it's me out of place, if there's something that I did, said, or thought that wasn't pleasing um, to you, like, show me. I Please forgive me for it um, so that I can just walk upright and remember the bigger picture. And I promise you, if you exchange that desperation that you feel with worship, for some reason, for me, what I was desperate for just doesn't seem as important <laughs> in the moment at least so um but know that god will answer your prayers he'll answer your requests but in moments of desperation just know that god is with you and today is a brand new day 
a day where you and I have been given the opportunity to choose better, love stronger, and shine brighter than the day before. Shine strong, live long.